Hello again and welcome to another Mordian Glory Warhammer 40k video. In today's episode, we shall be doing some musings on the meta. What is the current state of the competitive 40k scene and how might it evolve in the future? And so let's just get right into this. Let's not mess around. No long rambling Mordian Glory introduction for a change. So what is the current state of of the competitive meta. Well, we've just had a big points update by the Mutatorum Field Manual, and I definitely think that it's gonna shake things up. But as it stands at the moment, 10th edition has evolved down the lines that I predicted about eight months ago when the edition launched. We have seen a proclivity of vehicles and monsters, and overall it's been quite an elite meta. We've had lots of mechanized armies and motorized armies as well, for example. So there have been orcs, which obviously will, will be changing with their codex coming out. But at the start and where they are right now at the time of recording, uh, they are still doing lots of things in trucks, charging forward. Uh, we've also seen marines evolve with their codex and Ironstorm Spearhead really uh, take off as the go-to competitive army for a lot of marine players. Regardless of what chapter you are, you plug your army into Ironstorm and lean into those vehicles, lean into those gladiator lancers and stuff like that, and you are going to have a good time. We've even seen traditional melee factions like Black Templars and Blood Angels do well for leaning into their vehicles and going down a more mechanized a more vehicle heavy route and there have been other factions as well which started off not so strong but as they have adopted the metal boxes they've started seeing some really good results an example of this is death guard now sure they did get an update to their contagion rule which was very very helpful but a big shift that we saw was the kind of death guard armies that were being used we saw a shift away from the traditional more foot slogging tactics from 9th edition and people started putting plague marines in rhinos and the results were night and day death guard have become a really solid competitive army and i don't think i've seen a tournament death guard army that hasn't had at least one or two units of plague marines inside of rhinos now and you've got the ever-present mortaria with his three plague burst crawler buddies Likewise, Sisters of Battle had a difficult transition from 9th to 10th edition. All of those old bloody rose armies just did not work as intended in 10th. Um, instead, we have seen a shift towards there being more vehicles. You never saw vehicles. Okay, never say never, but you rarely saw vehicles in a sister army in 9th edition. It was all things like Repentia and stuff. And now you see lots of vehicles in sister armies, especially Castigators have been popping up. And generally, they've just been leaning towards and getting into the Dakar. They've not been as choppy choppy. And that's another important point regarding the current meta. It's very shooting focused. The majority of armies that are performing well, that are getting good results each week, are shooting people to death or they're doing it from range it may not be exactly with guns but you have armies which really are bringing the dacker and there tends to be a proclivity and a tendency for people to favor firepower over melee that is very terrain dependent though you will find on certain maps on certain terrain layouts that people are going into the choppy especially on wtc where there is a lot of dense terrain which allows people to jump from ruin to ruin but on things like uktc and also on the gw maps which a lot of places are adopting now we are seeing uh, people really go for the guns over the swords but it's not just vehicles there have been monsters which have been dominating the meta necron katan spam very much has been oppressing the competitive scene although i suspect we may see a move away from that now after the recent points update and we've also had elite infantry armies such as votan with their wannabe terminators and their exosuit guys and custodies have been doing very well they've not been going overly vehicle heavy or overly monster heavy but they have been really leveraging some points efficient elite infantry so overall up until this point i think that warhammer 40k 10th edition especially the competitive meta has focused on a more elite playstyle has been focused on more quality 
over quantity. But the big question is, is all of that about to change? I believe that there are a number of updates on the horizon and also ones that have taken place already which are pushing us away from the elite meta and pushing us towards a quantity has a quality all of its own. Firstly, with the upcoming release of the 10th edition Orc Codex, there's going to be another faction with a viable Horde playstyle. At the moment, you've got Guard who can do pure infantry guard, and that is a powerful playstyle, one that I've had good success with personally. You've also got Tyranids with that unending swarm, which has started to see more play and results are coming out from that. We've also got Admech, who are leaning into a lot of Skitari. And now we're going to have Orcs, which have got the ability to run an entire detachment called the Green Tide, which again is going to encourage people to take not 10, 20, 30, 40 infantry, but more like 80, 100, 120 infantry. If we do see a rise in these infantry playstyles, or at least infantry heavy kinds of army, it could force a shift in the meta as people are forced to take them into account. At the moment, everyone is just spamming all the anti-tank they can get their hands on, and that generally sorts them out against monsters and vehicles. And if you bring enough LAS cannons, it also kind of counts as anti-elite infantry as well. But you're gonna have a lot of LAS cannons and it still won't give you enough volume to truly cut through a wave of 100 to 150 Orc Boys or Tyranid Gants. No, when you come across those kind of armies, you need some dedicated anti-infantry in your list, or you just won't be able to clear them out before they tie you up and start frustrating you and clogging up your lines. I've played a number of games recently with some hordy play styles. I took pure infantry bugs, I took the unending swarm, and I also have gone for some pure infantry guard as well. And in several of my games, in fact at least once in both tournaments that I attended, I came across someone who physically did not have enough bullets for the amount of bodies that I was bringing. And that just meant the game was over before it began. But it's not just these traditionally hordy armies which are starting to get more traction at tournaments. We've also seen a number of factions which aren't traditionally quantity focused going down that path. A good example of this is Tau. For as long as I can remember, every competitive Tau army I have seen against me at a tournament or on the table next to me has had three Riptides, Crisis Suits, and there might have been one or two squads of infantry. And that's about it. But with 10th edition, they have increasingly seem to be like Xenos Guard. They've got infantry, tanks, a couple of elite units, but we're no longer seeing 10 or 20 foot slogging units. We're seeing multiple squads of breachers inside of Devilfish. We're seeing multiple squads of crude. We're seeing some pathfinders. There's, there's all sorts of infantry options that are in there now. I wouldn't be surprised if the average Tau army these days is putting 60 bodies down on the board before we then get to all of the other stuff. Now, of course, all of that may change with the Codex, but from what I have seen of it, it doesn't seem like battle suits are going to be the focus. And when I've been chatting to some Tau players, what they have said is, well, you'll take one squad with the melters and put a commander with them and then that's probably all the battle suits you're probably going to bother with and then after that it's going to be leaning into some of the other stuff that Tau can do. So if that is the case we will be seeing a more quantity focused Tau army and again that is going to have some implications for the meta. But it's not just about what people are being rewarded for using it's also about which armies seem to be being punished for going elite. For example, Chaos Space Marines. I've mentioned this in a few of my live streams, but every time I play against Chaos, it seems like they're trying to go full elite and they never seem to have enough stuff on the tabletop. You've got the Abaddon Brick, which is like 700 plus points in one unit. And every time I face off against that, internally, I'm jumping for joy. It's one squad with almost half my opponent's points tied up in it. If I can delete that, it's a huge blow. It's like if I take a super heavy and someone destroys it, it's like, oh, there goes a quarter of my army. But with the Abaddon Brick, it's like, oh, there goes half of my opponent's army. But as per the recent points update, 
Chaos Blade screens have seen their Legion Airs come down, and they've also seen their Cultists come down. And if you actually take a look at what Chaos Blade can do, it's not necessarily they're going to go full Horde, although it is actually possible for them to take like 120 Cultists, and then they've got the Accursed Mutants, and then they've got the... Felgor Beastman and the Traitor Guards, and you can go full Traitor Guard and have like 200 plus infantry models running around in your Care Space for an army if you want to. But it's not just that, because when I say armies are going more hoardy or they're going towards more quantity, that doesn't necessarily mean we're only talking about foot slogging infantry hordes. Like with Tau, I didn't think they were going to have a pure infantry build, although they might do. With Care Space Marines, I think that they need to move away or that they might move away from having this elite mindset of, okay, my stuff has got to be the best. We are the elite. We are the trade strategies too. Well, at 2,000 points, I can take six predators and six rhinos and fill those with all the infantry that I want. It's like, oh, okay, that's a lot of armor. And it's not necessarily that we're going down the horde route, although I think there could be a horde meta developing. But I think for a lot of factions that aren't traditionally hordy, there is still going to be quantity coming in here. Tower going to go quantity, Chaos Space will go quantity, and then look at Guard. We had some fantastic points decreases in the uh, Mutorn Field Manual where a lot of our tanks came down and now we can get Lehman Russes for 145 points. It's not out of the realms of possibility for a guy player to turn up with 100 plus infantry and 6 main bass tanks and some artillery on top of that as well. Individually those units aren't going to be great but combined that's a lot of OC and that's a lot of firepower. I mean, hell, even the Custodes have had a lot of points decreases with the last update. Although that might be to reflect the fact that their units got a lot worse. More than the fact that GW is trying to make them into a Horde army. But you can get a lot of Custodes in your list now if you push it. And of course there is one last thing to take into account. But bear in mind this is a little conspiracy theory -y, so put your tinfoil hats on. But we're about due for GW to mix things up. If you've been in this game long enough, you start to identify some of the patterns that occur every single edition. And GW starts off every edition by saying we're going to reduce the amount of books that people need, and we're going to reduce the amount of models that people need, and we're going to make it so you can get in the game and there's less barrier to entry and all this amazing stuff, it's going to be more convenient. And then they stick to that for a bit and they fool everyone, they bamboozle everyone. And then they slowly start lowering the points on everything. And then we get to the end of the edition and everyone's running around with huge armies that can barely fit into the deployment zone of the tiny tables. And GW goes, oh, new edition, guess what? We're going to make it easier for you guys. We're going to reduce the amount of books and we're going to reduce the amount of models we need. Same cycle. It is a cycle of life and death, of birth and rebirth, of points up and then points go down. And we be, you know, Death Edition's coming up to its year anniversary. So by my experience, we're getting to that point where GW is going to start bringing the points down bit by bit. Well, at least that's what I think. But of course, all of this is just like my opinion, man. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Are we heading towards a Horde meta or will we continue on this path of vehicle and also mechanized and monster domination? If you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe to never miss an episode. Would you like to know more? If so, then please consider becoming a channel member or patron. By supporting the channel, not only will you be doing your part, but you'll also be helping me create more content for your viewing pleasure and unlocking a whole host of perks. You get everything from a badge next to your name, custom emojis, but the big one is access to the Mordian Glory Discord server, an online community with almost two and a half thousand active members. It's always popping off in the MG Discord. We've got channels for army lists, hobbying, tactics, stories, and even a pretty spicy meme section as well. For all you greenhorns that wanted to see the Mordian glory hole, today is your lucky day.
And joking aside, I do want to say a massive thank you to all of the current channel members and patreons you guys are amazing truly the lifeblood of the channel i could not do more doing glory full-time without the incredible and generous support of my members so thank you guys so much and last but certainly not least i want to say a personal thank you to all of my top tier patreons these are the war masters, the people who have truly gone above and beyond the call of duty. To a heartfelt thank you to Alex Dengal, Bon Bon Vert, Mad Larkin, Marcus Roberts, Mark Panconi, RJ Scorpion, Swordfish Trombone, Try Again Bragg, John Stubbs, Nick Wolf, Diesel Fox, and August Barney. Seriously guys, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Your support is incredible and it makes a huge difference. Thank you so much. That's all for now. Hope you've all enjoyed today's video. And of course, as always, see you guys next time.